Well, China has major solar power ambitions. It added over 26 gigawatts of installed solar capacity in the first half of this year. That's up more than 34% from a year ago. Well, for more, I'm joined here on set by Amit Ronan, director of the GW Solar Institute and professor at the Trachtenberg School of Public Policy and Public Administration at George Washington University. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. So why are we seeing this rapid rise in solar panel production in China? Right, well, some of it you said in your, in your lead up, uh, we've seen growth all around the world. Solar power in the US and China doubled last year over 2015 and there's places like India where a few years ago there was no solar power, now investing tens of billions of dollars. And China in particular has uh, strong public policies in support of solar energy. They just passed another five year plan calling for 105 gigawatts of solar by 20. 20 and they want to see the price of solar panels, which is continuing to come down, halved between 2015 and 2020. Now on the demand side, who's really doing most of the buying? Uh, you have utility scale projects, which are thousands, hundreds of thousands, sometimes millions of panels in a large field. You have commercial and industrial applicants who put it on their big warehouses, and you have homeowners that are putting it in. It's the same solar panel, most, much of it coming from China, that's used in all those applications. Now, how advanced is China's solar technology, say, compared to the U.S. or Europe? Yeah, China's uh, manufacturing capacity and capabilities are certainly on par. Most of the world's first-tier manufacturers are basically producing the same commodity product. Uh, they're competing uh, to make their products a little more efficient, a little cheaper, but it's pretty much the same panel. There are a few manufacturers who specialize in more efficient equipment, but uh, by and large, those cost more, so it's a trade-off between cost and efficiency. And, and speaking of cost, we know that there have been government subsidies in solar when it comes to the Chinese market, but some companies are taking issue with this. What are the main points of contention? Uh, well, it's been a uh, couple years of uh, quite a dynamic debate, to put it one way. Uh, the U.S. currently has uh, fairly aggressive tariffs on U many U.S. Uh, solar uh, sorry, Chinese imported products up to 78% in some cases, and that has been a hindrance to the U.S. market. The uh, right last week here in D.C., the International Trade Commission heard new petitions that came from two U.S. solar manufacturers who actually just went bankrupt uh, due to market pressures, and they were saying we need uh, tariffs, more aggressive tariffs on all of these uh, imported panels. And really that, that leads to a uh, harm for the solar industry, who estimates it'll cost 88,000 U.S. solar jobs, lost tens of billions of dollars in investment, so it's a, it's a serious concern. So how do you have this balancing act? Because you have the producers on the one side, and then you have all this job creation when it comes to things like installation and sales. Yeah. What should be done with this sort of policy? Well, I mean, if you look at the overall solar job growth here in the U.S., which are a big focus of a lot of policymakers, elected officials, one in 50 jobs of in the entire U.S. were in the solar industry created last year. Most of those jobs are in the installation field, but those are dependent on lower cost imports, a lot of them from China, in order to make those jobs happen. So there are some losses in jobs in manufacturing here in the U.S., much more jobs created in the installation field. And in terms of our larger public policy goals of needing to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, lower priced energy, you know, you could say it's probably you want uh, free trade that would enable everybody to have the low, lowest cost panel. Now, it's interesting. We saw that quite a few companies, solar companies, were bankrupted in China. Any chance of that happening again, or, or are, we, are we too far on the resurgence? Uh, well, it's hard to say. It's an emergent industry, and there's a lot, always a lot of boom and bust cycles in uh, something that's, there's a lot of new companies, new entrants, not a lot of consolidation. Uh, so we, we may see that. There's certainly, we know that, Solar energy will likely be the largest source of new energy for the foreseeable future, but some people may be building too aggressively to meet that. And it's one of the ironies, I guess, is thanks uh, in part to China's investments, solar panel prices have come down 80% in the, since basically the last decade. But that means it's really hard for a lot of manufacturers to compete with super cheap panels. So they're, if they can't compete, they go bankrupt. Now let's look at the downside of the industry. In terms of any other risks or challenges that you could see potentially hindering the industry, what stands out for you? Uh, I wouldn't say there's a downside, but there's certainly challenges, uh, particularly integrating a very different energy source into a grid that was established to be centralized, big fossil fuel generators wheeling out power. 
uh, what happens when you put on lots of intermittent sources that uh, don't necessarily come on exactly when you want them. That means you need more storage. You need a smarter grid in order to accommodate that. Um, there's an issue with sometimes places have too much solar power coming on at once, and the cost is there's, you don't have to pay for the fuel, so that drives down the cost of electricity sometimes to zero, sometimes to negative prices. Say, please take my electricity. Uh, so that's an issue. In China, 11% of the solar power actually was wasted because it wasn't hooked up to the transmission system. All right, well, thank you so much yeah. for your 